Why did you click on the video? Let me know in the comments and also get used to these questions. Today we will play the match together again. Hello my friends! So after analyzing another fellow YouTube colleague, oh look, I got a heart from VidIQ. It's time to focus on my own good and mess up place again, with the difference that I'm going to ask you at certain points what you will do next. Oh no, not another Mia again please. Wait, two MMs? Let's make it three, because we're an epic. By the way, we also found an almost extinct species. A Camilla player and a AFK player, which is not uncommon in Epic. Oh wow, they actually switched me. I'm delighted. What I'm not so delighted about is this pick. Oh well, that is going to be fun later. Let's check the teams now. Mia wouldn't be a problem in the 1v1 for me, but since we are in Epic, Franco is going to babysit her, which makes it harder for me to finish her off. Karina is also a pretty good 1v1 counter, and Fulvius is a nightmare of course. Vale is also a strong pick, so except Mia, who is only really dangerous in the late game, the enemy's team is pretty strong. Our team is not looking that promising though. When I see a common emblem, I always expect the worst. Nana is also a 50-50 thing. There's some really good Nana players out there who are annoying AF, but also many who just randomly throw Molina around. So let's see how this turns out. Carmela on the side lane will be also interesting, while Atlas can help me really much to activate my ult easily. So let's get into the game. We actually have two Romas, but since Carmela is on the side lane solo, it's not a deal breaker. Usually you should never have two Romas in the team because only the least farm player gets gold and XP from it. If two have the Rome equipment and play together, both of them can farm and therefore almost have the same low amount of gold and XP, so neither of them is benefiting from the roaming effect. A few infos for anyone who never played 1-1. Usually you should play safe until you reach level 4, because what makes her really strong is her ult. Another thing that is really great about 1-1 is that she have a few purify every few seconds. So even when Franco hooks me, I can easily escape it. Here we stop for the first time. Franco is pretty low, but Atlas is as well. What will you do now? I decided to keep poking the enemy, which resulted in the first blood for us. But the better choice would have been to go into a bush and play safe. If you check the map, you will notice that Karina is missing. And at minute 130, she can be already on level 4, which is enough to kill Atlas and me as well. So if she would have showed up, we would have died both most likely. But since she didn't show up, we were fine. And I could push a bit, although I didn't push much, because I was scared that Karina is coming here now. Next we are here in the bush. What should we do now? Staying in the bush would be the right answer, but I… well, two questions and I basically had both wrong. That's why I love analyzing my gameplays, because I can see what I'm doing wrong. Luckily Karina was not yet level Luckily Karina was not on level 4 yet, so I could easily survive this mistake with my ages. But yeah, I could easily be on the back foot already after these two mistakes. Now we are in a 2v3 situation, and we have not much HP and mana left. Atlas is also engaging. What now? Atlas made a big mistake here, and we can't help him alone. But now, Nana and Zilong are coming top to help us. What will you do now? Since they engaged successfully and the enemies were pretty low, plus their skills are on cooldown, I decided to engage with them and Zilong got the triple kill, which is really awesome at this stage of the game. But now, it's really time to go back to the base and heal up. When we look at the current situation, you can see that we have already a good good lead and especially the enemy's Mia has already 600 gold less than us and is not even on level 4 yet, which means we can start to dominate her now. We only need to be careful about Franco's ult, since we can't escape it with our second skill. So how would you play now? We could force a gank, but it's always a risk. It's better to play it a bit safe now and wait for a good opportunity to start the gank. This we got when Franco was chilling in this bush, although I didn't play it perfect here. I thought I can kill the Mia with my ult and then Franco, but I was not strong enough yet to kill her, so I decided to take the safe kill and took out Franco. Making the enemy retreat is almost as good as a kill as well, if your opponent misses a wave like this or you can push freely. So the Franco is about to respawn and Mia should still be on the base. What would you do now? Since the turret shield is still up, you can get easily some gold from it. Also, since we can see Vale on the minimap, only Karina could ambush us now. 
But with our good lead, she can one-shot us right now. Especially because our Aegis is available. Franco hooked us once more, but it doesn't matter to us. Zilong is coming top now and killed Karina. And Franco is using his ult on Zilong. What now? Since Franco used his ult, which is the only thing that is really dangerous for us, we can engage aggressively now and easily trigger our ult. Now, we have almost no mana left, but both our enemies are dead. What would you do now? When you have an opportunity like this, you have to use it. So you have to push. Just make sure to retreat as soon as the enemies are showing up again. Afterwards, we killed the enemies once more, because they were playing it really bad. And we could finish the other turret. I also helped Zilong to finish the turtle quicker. And as you can see now, Franco, Mia and Karina are all top. What would you do now? Since Franco is so nice to let us activate our ult, we get another 2 kills and an assist. Our KDA is at 507 by now. KDA means kills, death and assists, if you ever wondered. Since I asked you already what you have to do after you killed your enemies, can you guess what I'm doing next? Exactly, pushing. But oh no, our Atlas got hooked. What should we do now? The smart thing to do here is keep pushing. As you can see, our ult is not ready yet, so engaging under the enemy's turret wouldn't be smart. You can do that if you can activate your ult quickly, but when it's on cooldown, it obviously doesn't work. Now, since Franco came so close that we can attack him outside of the turret, we can easily use him to activate our ult once more and focus Karina with it. I thought I can kill her with it already, but it wasn't enough. We could still destroy the turret, but now our worst nightmare is showing up. What now? Usually I think you should run, but I thought I can kill him easily as well, which only worked out because of Atlas ult. I also took out Franco and Vale, although it would have been easier if I used the hero lock function here. I maybe could have killed even Karina here. Also that Karina targeted Atlas instead of me was really lucky for me. So yes, I got a triple kill, but it could have been a very different outcome as well. And bullying the enemies is always a good idea, right? As a side note, we have already our third core item after 8 minutes. Minutes? Minutes. Which is really early. Next I take the red buff, because I can, and now I'm observing what everyone is doing. Panning around the map is one of the most important things you can do. You get a great overview of the situation and can even see if an enemy used the skill for example. Like before when we saw that Franco used his ult on Zilong. Informations like this can be vital to win or lose a gank. Next I saw Vale top while Zilong just died. What now? Since we are very fat, I decided to ambush him, but failed to activate my ult. I got hunted then by Franco who I killed and Foveyots who killed me. Even when he's not fat, he's a nightmare for 1-1. Although I almost killed him as well. Not a deal breaker though, because as you can see, we are by far the strongest hero on the battlefield. Now we respond. What would you do now? We don't really need the buffs. Because we are strong already. Top we can't really do much. Because breaking the inner turret doesn't usually work when all enemies are alive. So our best chance is to go mid and force a gang there by pushing. Franco and Fovius are nice enough to do us a favor and we could destroy the turret mid. Now what? Since two enemies are still dead and all of us are pushing right now, we should keep trying to force a gang or to push if they just hide from us. We killed Vale and Karina when they tried to ambush us but we are pretty low now. What will you do now? Again, 5 of us are still up and only Mia is left to defend the base. So keep pushing. Now we destroyed the inner turret mid. What now? We could have tried to finish it here, but in my experience, epics tend to run around the base and not actually attacking it, because they are scared to die. With my low HP and the fact that Franco and Fovius are about to respawn, I decided to go top to heal myself from the minions and the jungle creeps. Now that all enemies respawned, it would be wise to retreat, but as I said, epic players just run around the base, which is an awful place to gank. Camilla got hooked into the turret and Zilong went wild, so they both died. I was also super unlucky here to get hooked by Franco. I still managed to activate my ult here, but since Fovius can't be targeted while he's jumping, I couldn't target him on time and also died. Really unlucky here. What follows next? Well, just see it for yourself. <coughs> Boom! Death by Molina. Now after we respond, what would you do next? 
In this situation it would be the best to wait for the enhanced lord that spawns at minute 12 and just take it. In an ideal world, Nana and Atlas would secure the area, so we can take it without any risk. What really happened was, that Atlas decided to engage, while Zilong already started to take the lord down. In a situation like this, it's really difficult to activate 1-1's one ult. But Vale died anyway. We took the lord and Franco... well, I don't know what he tried here. And I died once more because of Ovios. Although he killed me, he basically sacrificed himself for it. And in the situation, where the lord is coming to your base, you need to stay alive to defend it. It was not a good trade for his team. Karina also runs around like a headless chicken here, and just easily got picked up by Zilong. So Mia and Vale have to defend the base now against 4 enemies and the lord, which doesn't work. So yeah, apart from some mistakes and 2 counters in the enemy's team, we managed to get quite smoothly through the match. Now go and check out the latest episode, where I show you another 1-1 one -one match that wasn't as easy as this one. Also a huge shout out to my patrons Garo OP, Twister J and the newest member Mavis. If you want to support my work as well, feel free to join it as well. See you over there!